Today I am bringing you a quick 20 minute workout to strengthen the lower body. This workout focuses on hip stability and it's going to be super helpful if you're dealing with any sort of hip imbalance. This workout is designed to help you engage with the muscles needed to keep the hips stable as you put force through the legs and engage the muscles in your glutes and your thighs. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessie McMaster and I'm a holistic fitness trainer and certified body worker here to help you use movement as a tool for your mental well-being and your longevity. In our workout today, we're gonna combine myofascial release techniques using a foam roller, Pilates, and weight training to help balance the hips, build the booty, and to keep the lower back out of pain. I want to continue to share my holistic approach to fitness and healthy living with you. So please make sure you like and subscribe. And then after our workout, grab the free training in the description below. For our workout, you're gonna need some supplies. So along with your mat, you're also gonna want a foam roller. And then if you have it, something smaller, more pinpointed to roll out the bottom of your feet. And that might look like a lacrosse ball or tennis ball. Or what I like to use is really the bar of one of my smaller dumbbells. Along with that, you're going to want a heavy sets of, set of weights, a heavy set of weights, and then a yoga block. Now the yoga block is optional. It's just going to add a little bit more of a challenge to our weight training, but grab it if you have it around. Along with that, please, please, please make sure you have your hydration beverage. I'm drinking water here today with some electrolytes using these element electrolytes, love them. And just like any other journey, the set and setting are important to help influence a positive outcome and really help you get the most out of this experience. So take a moment to arrange the energy of your space, set up your vibe, put some good music on, make sure you have your equipment and your hydration beverage, and then take a big breath and get your mind right here with your body so that you can really enjoy this beneficial and necessary time for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me today and let's get ready to move. We are going to begin our workout today by rolling out the bottoms of our feet. So find your tool and start to explore around your heel bone, going back and forth. And the intention here is to create compression into the tissue at the bottom of the feet. So whatever tool you're using, you might be smashing or scraping, find what works for you. Explore the heel bone, explore the ball of the foot, the inner arch, the outer edge. Here I switched over to use the bar of one of my dumbbells to really scrape the bottom of the foot. So you just find what works for you. Any areas that feel especially bound or tight, you double back and forth over that area, really trying to smooth out the tissue and then switch feet. This first part of our workout is our warm up phase and we are gonna be moving pretty quickly. So just back and forth, back and forth. We're not solving any issues here. We're just exploring, we're cre increasing circulation and bringing more awareness to our feet. And then we're gonna move to our foam roller. So our first section is from the ankle to the back of the knee and we're gonna roll back and forth. As you foam roll, you want to push the blood towards your heart. So that's the most Im intense part of the roll is as you move towards the heart. After your calf, you're gonna move to the back of your thigh, hitting your hamstrings from the back of the knee to the hip. That's the next section. And once again, we're moving fast. Make sure your arms are active, your shoulders are down, you're breathing. After you hit your hamstring, move into your glute, finding the angle rolling back and forth over any especially tight areas. Now switch to your other leg, roll out your calf, rotating the leg inward so you can hit the inner side of the calf, ro rotating the leg outward so you hit the outer edge, and then moving on to your thigh. So just back and forth, pushing the blood towards the heart. You're gonna be rolling all over the place, so don't worry if you roll off your mat, that's totally normal. After you hit your thigh, then you move into that butt cheek, that glute muscle, back and forth into the side. You can lean into it. We are not rolling bone, we're rolling muscle. And you will feel a difference when you're on bone. Now we're gonna flip to the front of the leg. We're gonna roll out the muscle that's on the lateral part of the lower leg. So the outer part, not the shin bone, but just to the outside of it. The more weight you put into it, the more intense it is. So you are in charge of intensity here. Once you hit both shins, 
Now we're moving to the front of the thigh, the quadriceps, from the top of the knee all the way into the hip joint, pushing towards the heart. Now those quads are probably really tight. Whoo, take a breath. Your arms are active, shoulders are down, all the way up into that hip crease. Getting different edges of the quad, rolling the leg inward to get the inner edge, outward to get the outer edge. And then you can move the foam roller to the side of your body as you hit the, the inner thigh, the adductor, and then move on to your other thigh. Take a big breath. I understand that this is not the most comfortable thing to do, but I like to think of it as temporary discomfort, temporary pain for a whole lot of relief. What you're doing right now is increasing circulation. You're improving the motility of how those muscles are going to work when you get to the weight portion of our workout today. So this is an important part to just, we're preparing the body. Then you hit the inner thigh and now we're going to do a little bit on our arms. So laying on your belly, you're going to start with your forearm going back and forth, flipping your palm to face down to face up. So you get different angles. So hitting the forearm and then moving on to your bicep of that upper arm. So from the elbow to the armpit now. Back and forth. Any areas you can hang out and kind of shake it out. You can take a breath. And then you switch to the other arm. When you feel those very tight or tense areas, just go back and forth, back and forth. Just like if someone was giving you a massage and they would f feel that knot, you would want them to kind of knead that area. And that's what you're doing here. You're using the foam roller as a tool to massage out those knots. So once you're done with your second arm, now we're going to hit the tricep. So coming up onto your knees and hit the back of the upper arm from the back of the elbow all the way into that armpit. Take a big breath. We're moving quickly here. This is part of the warm up. So by now, you should probably get a little sweat going, feeling the heat rise in the body. Make sure you hit both arms. And now we're going to go up and down our spine. So you're going to sit on your foam roller and give yourself a hug. And then roll from the lower back all the way up to the back of the neck. Just rolling back and forth, pushing with your legs. If you have long hair, make sure you hold your hair so it doesn't get caught up in the roller. And then you can explore the traps a little bit, maybe the armpits, maybe the side of the body. And if you have animals, animals love when you're rolling on the floor, so they might come join you. Take a big breath. Back and forth. We're almost done here, right? We're not solving any issues. We are bringing awareness and improving, increasing circulation. That concludes our foam rolling part of our warm up. Now we're going to move on to a few Pilates exercises. So lying on your side, lift your lower waist away from the floor. Keep your heels together as you open the top knee and close the top knee. This exercise is called clamshells. And as you open and close that top knee, you want to make sure that your pelvis stays stable. And you're going to do that by knitting up the front of the rib cage, keeping that lower rib lifted off the floor. So those hips stay vertically stacked. Open and close that top knee. Really feeling that booty muscle back there, helping you pull that knee open. We wanna feel the muscle activation of the glute. That's what we're going for, that's the intention. Take a breath. Now hold this next one, do little pulses for four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna close it up. All right, now next move, staying on this side, extend the top leg. Flex your toes up to your face, bring the knee up, hold that shin parallel to the floor, make sure the lower rib is lifted, and then exhale, stomp and point your toe. Do it again, the knee comes forward, make sure your shin is parallel to the floor, and then exhale, stomp, point your toe, pull the leg back a little bit at the bottom so you feel that glute. And again, bring the knee up, exhale, stomp and point the toe. Now while you do this, you're double checking, maybe that top hand is on your hip, so the top hip does not hike up towards your top rib. Inhale, the knee comes up, exhale, stomp, and then point your toe at the bottom. Lift that lower rib off the floor. Find your breath, draw your core in. The priority is to keep the pelvis stable. Do not let that top hip wobble up. Now finish this last one, point your toe, hold that leg out and draw a circle up and around. Taking a big breath, and then reverse the circle and draw it the other way. Abs in tight, knitting up the rib cage. Three, two, 
one, and release. Tap that hip out. All right, now we're going to take an easy twist here. So top arm reaches up and then open that rib cage. Take a big breath. Maybe stretch out your top leg just to stretch the outer thigh. And then exhale, bring it all the way back to center. We are going to do that same sequence on the other side. So flip it over. We're going to start with clamshells. Get your lower rib to lift off the mat. So there's that space between your lower waist and the mat. Hips vertically stacked. And then you open the top knee and close. I keep my top hand either on my hip or feeling into my glute muscle just so that I can get that good mind muscle connection. Heels are together, feet are bright. Think of your bottom knee pushing down into the floor as your top knee lifts. Two more here. Abs in, keeping the pelvis stable. Now hold this last one. Let's do little pulses. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release that top knee down. Now we go into stomp. Hold that leg out, flex the toes up to your face. Knee comes forward, make sure you're not dropping your knee. And then exhale, stomp, point your toe, pull the leg back just a little bit. The priority is to keep the pelvis stable. So making sure that you are not hiking up that top hip as you bring that knee forward. Keep that lower rib lifted off the floor the whole time. Relax your neck, soften your jaw. Inhale as you bring that knee forward, flexing the toes up. Flare your sit bones. It should feel kind of like you're trying to sit into a chair. And then you stomp and point your toe. Knee comes forward, flare the sit bone, and then exhale, stomp and point your toe. Take a big breath, knit up the rib cage. Always remember your abdominals attach into your lower ribs. So what your ribs are doing is going to have a huge effect into how you're engaging with your core. Now hold that leg straight and draw some circles up and around. Keep the pelvis stable. Three, two, one, and then reverse. Go in the opposite direction. Abs are tight. Point the toe. Last two, last one, and release. Now let's take that twist. So open the top arm up and back. Relax the shoulders, lengthen the back of the neck. Take a big breath into your lower back. And as you exhale, just enjoy this stretch. Hmm. One more big breath. Really get the breath all the way down into the low back. And on an exhale, draw a big rainbow in the sky and bring it back. Find your way to tabletop, all fours, and draw some circles with your hips. Keep your fingertips active. Circle around in one direction and then the other. And then we'll find down dog. So tuck the toes under, lift the hips, and start to pedal the heels. Make sure your fingertips are active, your shoulder blades around the outsides of the armpits, your head is just hanging. Knit up the ribs and pedal the heels, one and then the other, stretching the back of the legs. Then walk your hands to your feet or feet to hands and roll it up to standing and pause for a moment. Take a big breath, slow down the exhale. Now we're gonna move into our strength training part of our workout. So make sure you have a heavy set of weights and if you want an added balance challenge, a yoga block. We're gonna have right leg forward, left leg back for split squats. And we're gonna do a different variation of split squats today. So it's a double tap. So you go down, you bring that back leg forward a little bit, down again, and then you come up and you balance on the front leg. We only have six repetitions on each side, so I want you to go pretty heavy. I want you to hold the heaviest weight you can do as you do these split squats, double tap split squats. So you go down, keeping the weight in the front leg, bring that back leg a little closer, do it again, come up into a balance. Now, keeping that front heel on the floor and the big toe down on the floor, Really allow the weight to be in that front leg. That's the goal here. And just be aware of your pelvis, making sure as that left leg steps back, you're not dropping that left hip. So the hips stay even so we can really work the muscles in the legs. Draw your core in. We're going to do one more here. Taking a big breath, come up into a balance. Hold it for a second. Little bend in the elbows, chest up, shoulders down, and then release. Now set those weights down carefully. Take a second. Take a big breath in. Slow that exhale down. Shake out the legs a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing other side. 
So if you're using a yoga block, put it in the right position. We're going to have a left leg forward, right leg back. And as you pick up your weights, you want to make sure that you're bending your knees, having your legs nice and wide so the spine stays straight and your core is tight. So when you're ready, grabbing those weights, setting up with the left leg forward and the right leg back. Feel that front left foot on the floor, the heel, the ball of the foot, the big toe. And then it's a double tap, split squat, and you come up into a balance. You hold for a second, breathe. Keep a slight bend in the elbows. Keep that body weight forward in that front leg. Hold that balance at the top each time. Make sure you're not dropping the right hip as you split squat. Super important. Be aware of the pelvis. Just because the legs are split doesn't mean that the hips are split. Hips need to stay together. That's how we protect our lower back. Almost there. Just a few more. Double tap. Split squat. Come up into a balance. Squeeze the booty. Pull your core in. You got this. We got one more. Keep that weight in the front leg. Come up into your balance. You're going to hold it. Breathe. Shoulders down. Three, two, and one. Go ahead and release. Put those weights down carefully and shake it out. Now we have three rounds of this exercise, and this is our strength training part of our workout. So we've prepared the hips. We foam rolled. Go ahead and grab some water or your hydration beverage. Giving ourselves a little break here before we move into the second set. Now, if you have access to heavier weights and you feel like you could go a little heavier, only six repetitions, I want you to go heavy. That's the whole point of this workout. We prepared really well. We only have one exercise and we want to go heavy. That's how we really train those muscles. All right, we're going to prepare. We're going to have left leg forward, right leg back. Let's do this. So carefully picking up your weights, making sure your spine is straight as you pick those heavy weights off the floor. Set up with your left leg forward, your right leg back, double check the hips, and then double tap and come up into a balance. Draw the core in, keep a slight bend in the elbows, keeping that body weight forward. It's going to be tempting to want to lean into your back leg. Don't let that happen. Make sure you're not dropping that right hip as you do your split squat. Finishing up this last three. Keep that body weight forward. Take a big breath. Draw your core in. Two more to go. Keep that front left big toe down, gripping the ground. We got one more. Double tap. Come up into your balance. Go ahead and hold it. Squeeze your booty. Pull your core in. Three, two, one one and then you're going to slowly release carefully place those weights down and shake it off a little bit find your breath here if you need a sip of water grab a sip of water i like to dance it out in between just kind of who shake it off and then we're going to move into that right leg forward so scooting your block over if you're using a block and remember the block just adds an added challenge all right, place that right leg forward, left leg back, square the hips, make sure you're not dropping that back left hip, and then going into your split squat. We got six. Slight bend in the elbows, keeping your front big toe down. Five. Squeeze your booty, pull your core in. And as you do your split squat, let the front knee come forward a little bit. It's okay that the front knee goes forward as long as your right heel stays down. Making sure the front knee is tracking over the center of the foot. Do not buckle that front knee in towards the big toe. Finishing these last two. Draw the core in. Keep that body weight forward. We got one more. Make sure you're not dropping that back hip. Now you're going to hold this one. Balancing, squeezing your booty. Draw your core in. Three, two, one. And then carefully release. Carefully place those weights down, making sure to keep the spine straight and shake it off. Maybe take a lap, walk around a little bit, shake your arms out, slow down your exhale. When you're ready, you're going to grab some water 
take a sip, even if it's just a sip of your hydration beverage. We have one more round. One more, one more. Now, if you feel like you could go a little heavier and you have the weights, I suggest you go a little heavier. Shake your arms out. We're going to start with the right leg forward. Take a big breath. Carefully pick up your weights. Position your front right foot. Think about the alignment from foot to knee to hips to left hip. And here we go. We got six. Coming up to balance. And five. Keep that front big toe gripping the ground. Four. Hold that balance at the top each time. Keep that body weight forward. Draw the core in. Three. Keeping the spine nice and straight. Shoulders down. Two. Keep that body weight forward. Don't cheat. Don't lean into that back leg. You got one more. Big breath. Come up and balance. You're going to hold it. Squeeze your booty. Draw your core in. Keep that front big toe down. Three two, one, and then you're going to carefully release. Be mindful as you place those weights down. Shake it off. So when we're really focusing on alignment, really creating a muscle to mind, a mind to muscle connection, we're going to get more out of our workout. <sighs> Holding those hips together, really feeling the muscles in the booty. Switching to the other side, you're going to grab your weights, place your left foot, take a breath, square the hips, and then double tap, split squat, and then come up into a balance. Whew. Load up that front leg. Make sure you're not dropping that right hip. You got a total of six here. Taking it slow, focus on your form. Body weight forward, big toe down. Making sure your knee is tracking over the center of your foot. Do not let that left knee buckle in. Squeeze your booty, draw your core. Find that balance at the top each time. There's a little pause. Big breath. Finding this last one, you're gonna hold your balance. Slight bend in the elbows, draw your core in, five, four, three, two, and release. Carefully step back, carefully put those weights down. Whew, take a big breath, shake it off. The way we catch our breath is to lengthen the exhale. So exhale a little bit longer when you're ready. Swing those arms out, do a little victory dance, move it around a little bit. We want to stay standing, just kind of shake it off. Dancing is the best way to shake it off. We're going to release the tension. Feel the blood flowing. Feel that little high you get after lifting heavy weights. And then once you've caught your breath, we're going to move into a very quick stretch. So once you feel like you've caught your breath, maybe grab a sip of water. You're going to lay on your back and hug your knees into your chest. Rock side to side so you're massaging your lower back on the floor. Keep rocking. You can roll your ankles around and wiggle your toes. Maybe move your knees around in a circle. And then we're going to take a twist. So shifting the hips over to the right a little bit, let your knees fall over to the left. Your right arm is out by your right side. Turn the head to look over the right shoulder. And if you want, your left hand can be on your right knee, kind of guiding that knee down. Now take one more breath. And then exhale, bring it back to center. Give your knees a hug to reset the spine. Shift the hips to the left an inch and then let the knees fall over to the right. Left arm reaching out. You're looking over the left shoulder and you're practicing slowing down your breath. So breathing into the lower back. Nice long exhale. Finish this last breath. And then bring your legs back to center. Give your knees a hug. Move your knees around in a circle. Then take your legs up to the sky. Take your arms up to the sky. And we're just going to shake those limbs out. Now, if this is uncomfortable to do arms and legs, you can always hold the back of the legs as you shake the legs out. 
and then we'll take it into a figure four stretch. So left foot on the floor, cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh, lock out your right ankle and open that right knee away from the body. If you want a deeper stretch, you can reach through the hole and grab onto the left knee, pull the left knee into your chest. And you gotta find what feels good. It might feel good to rock side to side. Finding the angle that feels appropriate for your right hip. Last breath as you deepen the stretch. And then we're gonna release. Shake that right leg out in the sky and then we switch to the other side. So left leg, left ankle on top of right thigh. Take a second, relax the pelvis down, open the left knee away from the body, make sure you're locking out that left ankle. And then you get to decide your variation here. What does your left hip need? Take a big breath, breathe all the way down into your tailbone. Try to relax the tailbone onto the floor. And as you exhale, let the spine settle. Find what your body needs. And on this side, your body might need something else. Allow this to be exploration time. So if you need to take a little twist, if you feel like leaning to the side, we'll do it. You find what works for you. If you want to squeeze that leg in a little harder, you can do that. Take one more big breath, then release that stretch. Put both feet on the floor and do a few windshield wipers, letting the knees go back and forth. And you are complete. When you're ready, roll over onto your favorite side and slowly come up. Thank you so much for working out with me today.